So Jeff, how did you get started in glass? How did I get started in it? A long time ago, you know, 40 something years ago, it was a hobby. Um, I had a, had a little breakfast nook and it was kind of boring and I just thought, I'm gonna make this thing look better. So I just uh, started doing it. And uh, they basically started as a piece of wood on top of a washing machine. And that's how most people started and it grew into this. That was, that was quite a while ago. So um, that's how I started. And making stuff, giving it away to people, um, and constantly asking a lot of questions. This is one of those industries that you never stop learning because there's always somebody better than you at it, you know? And uh, I wasn't afraid to do anything. People would ask me to make things. And I said, yeah, I can do that. And maybe I never did it before. And, I became, it's a new skill that I added. So I think it's really helped me a lot to, to be where I am today. I get some good orders. This, this year has been a banner year for me doing things. So I'm glad to share everything you, that, that, I, that I do and, and my little shop here what comes out. Okay, how about, how about uh, uh, showing us a little bit of a how you do this? It. Okay. Ta-da! This used to be a, uh, a one-car garage years ago, and uh, gutted it, put the door and the window in, and uh, have a beautiful view of the gardens here. And this is all very functional for me. And I got this table here started off as a table. And now it's got everything under there. You can imagine all all my lead, all the materials you've got. So I'm not. I never run out of anything. Um, I salvage this from working on a remodel in an old bathroom and it wheels around as my cutting table and more glass, more stuff inside. I have more glass here, um, more tools. I got a classic rating how to help me through the day. I got my glass shop here. I probably have about ten or $20,000 worth of, of glass in here. Uh, clear glass, iridescent, glass you can see through, all kinds. And I got some stored up there, some stored in here stored all over the place and stored down below. So uh, that's the shop. And this looks kind of messy right now, but um, I'm in the middle of a project that's got to be done by next week. And this table usually gets to be messy. I really cleaned it up for you, Paul, so uh, it would show better. So that's the shop. Um, right here, people ask me what this is. It's a, it's a stopwatch. When, when I do uh, custom work for people, uh, I keep time of everything uh, because what the time I, I spend on this project helps me become a better estimator for the next one. Okay, one of the things you, uh, you wanted to know is how do we make things? And uh, take, take a look right here, Paul. This is, uh, this is a project I'm working on now that uh, it starts off with a a conversation with a customer of what they like, what they don't like, uh, what colors they like, what's going on in their house. That's a really big deal. Um, this is a this is going to be an eight foot window when it's all done. Uh, and the, the customer wanted a lot of color in it, but there was already a lot of color in their, their historic house. And we didn't want this piece to compete with anything. We wanted it to complement and so we made this piece to complement. So it's uh, very complicated, but it's simple. And part of what makes it complicated is uh, down here, we have this piece of glass, it's one piece that goes through there. And that tends to be a little bit challenging to make. And on this piece, we wanted this, this bevel, that, the cluster that we made to fit in there like it was floating. And so we had to cut all of that and make it fit and, and pull together. And then uh, for the corner pieces, uh, we have uh, some more clusters and we made it, it starts off with, um, it starts off with something like this. This is a, a life-size version of what it is. Can we do it? Uh, what's it supposed to look like? And this, this takes a while to do because it had to be precise so it would fit in that. And I had it professionally made outside 
because I don't have the, uh, the materials to do it, but everything else we have to do. And once we get it back, I have to make sure it fits, and we have to put all the lead around and put it together. And I use this to determine what's the best way to put that lead in there so it looks like a seamless joint. And if you look here, it's really hard to tell uh, now how it goes. It's all, it's all like one just flows. And so without thinking about that ahead of time, you can't do it. And we do the same thing with this. Uh, ahead of time, we, we do um, make this. This is what we sold our customer on it. And that turned into this medallion. That's that one. And we'll take and, and do things for them. Let's see if we can hold this up for you here. That when you, when you look through it, the light beams through it. And we've got the glass going in, so it gives a different perspective. It pulls your eye in on it. And this this is really going to look nice in there when we get it done. And here's here's a, a, a piece that I show my customers about. What goes into the job? Um, borders. This this is called um, lead came. That's uh, basically pieces of, uh, of lead that look like that, and the glass goes in between. And then after we put the glass in it, we solder it, and we stuff uh, cement in it so that it won't rattle and shake, and it, it, it seals it up. Uh, clean all the excess off. So when you look at this, you don't even, you can't even tell. We call these kaleidoscopes. Uh, we, mermaid kaleidoscopes. We made up a story that back in the old days, mariners would go out and they'd meet up with the mermaids and the mermaids would fall in love with them. And the mermaids gave, gave them uh, these and they would look through them. And every time you turn these, you get a different perspective. Some people like to look through them, but you look through them this way shake them up a little bit and everything changes. It's, it's very, very magical. Watch this. It shows up better with this one, Paul. Watch this. I'm going to shake it and look what shows up. It has the surface, all the stuff floats to the surface. And every time you, you move it around and shake it, it comes up with something new. This has been a great seller, uh, but to make 100, 150 of these a year, um, and make them consistently it required me to figure out uh, how, how to, I made all these jigs I put out so you can see them. The crazy looking things, um, but what they do is they help make sure that I can make these things consistently. And on these bigger ones, we've taken anything that people want to put in them. Uh, we've got piano parts in them, scuba gear parts in them, clock parts, uh, whatever. So these we have selling. People go on their vacations, they come back with the little sand and the little goodies and they bring them to us and we, we enclose them in that for them, any size they want. Basically the rest of the pictures in here, the rest of the ones in here are some of the things I did. This, uh, the, the fun part about this is when you see the, the lead going around, lead, won't, lead has to tie into one another. So this stops here, but then it picks up back over here and goes around. And in some of these, when you, when you look here, you see this piece, and you see this piece, the question is, was this piece the original piece, and this piece cut up, or was it the other way around? Right, to get And uh, to, to do that it requires very, very precise uh, measuring, and that really adds to the cost. So the, the cost of doing one of these things is usually about three times something, something like this next one right. over here. And all this does is just represent different styles. That one, the next one there, that was, uh, Patty just says, you know, why don't you just pick some glass up, put it down, and then make something. This just shows a different variety of things that, that, that you know, these are all the ones that I'll, I'll bring to the, to the shows for sale. Just represent variety. Some, some artists you can look at and say, well, that's this person or that person. And this is a result of basically the willingness to do anything. And we have, sadly, we have more, more stored in the basement. That one's a replica of, uh, of an old house here in, in Redland. Somebody, the, the, the vacuum one. cleaner, yeah, that one, the vacuum cleaner bounced down the stairs and went flying through the window. Uh. And the window was totally eaten out by termites, so we had to make a completely new wooden window for them. And that costs more than this. 
But I, it, was, it was kind of fun. It's, neat. it's called Poor Man's Glass. And, and that one. That gorgeous. was another one that is. With uh, the curved. Uh, now you look in the middle of it and then you see a face. Can you see it? The face here. There's a oh, mustache, okay. a mouth, and nose, and part of an eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually somebody in the church uh, saw that. Huh. He said, well, we should buy this for the church because it has the face of Christ in it. Okay, and then there's, there's that's, others. That's beautiful. Now, this last one, this is a particularly difficult piece to make, although it doesn't look like it is. Um, normally, when we start building, we start from the corner and go that way. But with this, we have to put this together and make sure that fits. And when it all goes together, make sure that it, it'll fit inside of this, uh, this bevel. So we work basically from the inside out Excellent. on those. All right. Well, thank That's you, Jeff. It. You're welcome. Beautiful.